Hi guys. Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy and I am on Dixie Bell's Facebook main page right there and I am on Dixie Bell's Instagram main page right there. I'm coming to you live from my shop. I am <clears throat> the owner and creator of Tracy's Fancy and I meet with you guys on Wednesday nights right here every single Wednesday night must yeah every single Wednesday night at seven o'clock central time um, for what we call whimsical Wednesday and I am very happy to be here with y'all tonight y'all forgive me I've got a um, <clears throat> a sore throat we've kind of got like a little bug going through our home so I am coming to you from inside my shop. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell. Um, I've worked with Dixie Bell for about four years. I love all of their products. Hi, Michelle. Dixie Bell, thank you for being here. Hi, Laura. Instagram, hello to all of you. I see you over there. Oh, we've got a good crowd tonight. Hello, Miss Gina and Sue. Hi. Okay, Sue, don't be disappointed. We are Gypsy Joe. We are going um simple and clean tonight very simple and clean um i'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory but there's something that i wanted to talk to you about when you go simple and clean with a paint finish you actually have to be a little bit more careful than when you go amber i see all y'all's comments thank you so much hi debbie um you actually have to be a little bit more careful than when you use a ton of color because when you use a ton of color i was talking to a client of a uh, well, she, is a, she was a potential client. She's now a client. I take custom orders. Um, talking to her today, and she was showing me all these pictures, and, and I said, ooh, that's like a lot of, you know, that's kind of wild. Um, and it doesn't even, it doesn't have to be wild to have multiple colors in it, but you can kind of hide things a little bit more. But when you're going just a simple, clean finish, other things are going to stick out a little bit more. Things like drips or... Um, bleed through especially um, especially with the light color which we're going light tonight and uh, brush strokes so I know that a lot of y'all get a little wrapped around the axle about brush strokes right <coughs> excuse me um, I don't worry about them so much but I also don't paint simple and clean so do you see do you see the difference there so if you're painting simple and clean and uh, you know just with a perfect, perfect finish, if you have a lot of brush strokes, they're gonna show up. If you're painting tons of detail with checkerboard patterns and uh, sea spray texture additive, and why is that coming through on my phone? Hold on guys, Instagram. Uh, do I not have it on do not disturb? There we go, there we go, okay. And this is weird, very weird. Thanks Deb, I got these from a girl called Hey Girl Hey. Hey girl, hey, she has accounts on both Instagram and Facebook. Anyway, um, so I wanna talk to y'all about a clean finish. So I'm doing a clean finish, it's a small piece, it's a nightstand, I was supposed to post it at like five o'clock today and I forgot, uh, but here it is. So let me show you, we're gonna do, um, I've been working on a very large chest of drawers this week, right? Um, let me turn the camera here so you guys can see. Um, this is the size piece that we're gonna work on tonight. So the large chest of drawers actually goes with this piece. It is not part of a, a, an original set. I am piecing them together. And um, also these both go with the headboard that we worked on a few times on Whimsical Wednesday right here on Wednesday night. Um, the gray headboard with the, the Victorian damask stencil and the striped footboard. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all follow me on my page and y'all remember that? I don't think Dixie Bell has shared it yet. Um, so all of that is going in one bedroom for one of my clients, her guest bedroom. And so the bed was mostly grays and saw, you know, like sawmill gravy and hurricane gray the with touches of plum crazy. The dresser, the chest of drawers is mostly plum crazy. If you follow me, you've seen, oh, that's weird, Colleen. I, I, I think everybody can hear me. Hi, Cynthia. Um, go out and come back in, Colleen, maybe. Or maybe your Bluetooth is on. I don't know. That's weird in my car. That happens to me a lot in my car. So this piece I'm gonna go with a solid cream to begin with, an off-white to begin with. We're going with silk 
All right, we're going with the silk. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to leave this mostly off-white and gold, and I'm probably gonna do some touches of gray on it and not do any plum crazy on this piece at all. Thank you, Monta, thank you so much. So I decided that I would do silk on this. The other pieces do not have silk on them. They are the chalk mineral paint, but you can mix the lines. They work together okay. Um, you don't wanna mix your colors like in the jar, but you can paint a base coat with chalk mineral paint and then paint some silk on top of that. Or you can paint silk and then put some chalk mineral paint on top of that. Or you can do one piece in chalk mineral paint and one piece in silk. You can work the lines together. Um, but when it comes to me painting a simple solid color on a flat piece, let me show you the drawer fronts. This is what they look like. This is the original. So they're flat. This is another situation. If you have a piece that has tons of carvings on it, and this is what my client was sending me today. This is a, we're doing a little lesson tonight, okay? You guys, lots of, lots of lessons tonight. We are gonna paint, but we're gonna talk about some lessons. If you have a piece, she sent me these pieces with all these ornate carvings, lots of carvings and big bulky legs and carvings, and they were pieces that, um, People that I know have painted and there's just colors moving all through them. Hi, Maureen. Um, and then her pieces, she's got like six pieces. Her pieces are more clean and simple with flatness like this. And I was like, she was like, I really like this. And I was like, okay, that piece probably has 15 colors on it. And they're all buried in those carvings and they're working. You can tell that the artist, you know, painted and wiped back and painted more and wiped back and added more layer and wiped back. We can't do all that on this flat surface right here. I mean, you can, but it's gonna be a little bit crazy, right? So, um, I don't know how I got off on that tan how I got off on that tangent, but anyway, I'm gonna do a flat surface, and we're gonna go from dark wood to light paint, and I'm gonna walk you through that, and I'm gonna show you how I get this smooth of a finish. This is a primed piece. This smooth right here, See the smoothness in that? I'm gonna show you how I get that. Now, Dixie Belle paint, both the chalk mineral line and the silk have self levelers in them if they are, if you're new. Oh, good, Colleen, yes. So if you're new to Dixie Belle, please say where you're from and let us know if you're new. Um, we have retailers, by the way, um, all over the place. So I have put a link at the top of the video on Facebook. If you click that link, you can go over to um, the Dixie Belle website. That's where it will take you. And you, there's a little search bar at the top. You can put your zip code in and you can find a local retailer near you and um, you can go in and shop and, and look at the products in person. If you already know what you want, you can also click that very same link, which happens to be my affiliate link. And it will also take you to the Dixie Bell Paint Company page and buy what you need, put it in your cart and order it. And then um, that lets Dixie Bell know that I've sent you and they keep track of that. So, um, that also looks good too. So whichever way you prefer to shop. Um, so what was I saying? I told, I'm getting off track. So let's get started. Let's get started. Gonna, oh, both of the paints have lev self levelers in them. Uh, the difference between the chalk mineral paint and the silk paint, chalk mineral paint works really, really well with a lot of water. You can be very artistic. You can blend colors. You can make your own colors. You can blend on the piece. Um, it, it dries really quickly. It dries from the, uh, inside out and the difference with uh and you also you don't need to top coat it but most people do it will self cure itself within 30 days um however the silk paint has built in bonding primer and uh, no blocking primer built-in blocking primer and a built-in top coat and it also has a uv protectant so it's good to use like on your front door um areas that get a little bit of uh, outdoor light so it will uh, change colors on you um but it dries differently. It dries from the outside in. So you don't have as much play time with it because it starts to develop like a little skin over the top of it. Um, you don't have as much play time. Uh, you don't wanna use it with water, really. I mean, you can a little bit, but you gotta be super careful. Um, let's see, oop, I missed that one. Sturgis, Kentucky. Hi, Fonda, good to see you. I'm so glad to see you here. I'm here every single Wednesday night. We'd love to have you. We do a lot of lessons. We do a lot of talk. Uh, we work through a lot of, uh, you know, like trial and error type stuff, and then we paint. So we're going to paint right now. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using tonight. Rollers. 
I'm gonna be using rollers. Rollers will give you a flawless finish if you are working on pieces that have flat surfaces like this. Now this is an actual inset, so let, we're gonna talk about how to work with uh, insets like this if you're wanting to use a roller. Now the piece that's here next to me is flat on all sides. There's not one single carving. Flat, flat, flat front, right? So I'm like, well, I don't, I wanna use silk, but I want it to be super, super, super smooth. Break out the rollers, but guess what else? We're still gonna use a brush. We're still gonna use a brush, all right? Now I don't have any specific roller that I like. Uh, Dixie Belle doesn't carry rollers. Um, you can use a roller. You can use a foam brush if you like. Um, you can use any size roller. I'm using a tiny, tiny little roller that I got like at Home Depot. Um, and I've even got a little baby roller tray, like a little baby roller tray. Um, if you want to use a bigger roller, you can use a bigger roller if you want to. This piece is small. The small roller worked just fine. I brushed my paint on and then we roll. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, my primed pieces are primed and ready to go. And then we are going to put silk on top of those the same exact way that we put um, the primer. So I'm going to angle the camera down here. Um, Patty, watching from Chicago, painting my first project with Dixie Bell. Patty, I am so glad. I hope your project is going well and I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, the very first thing I did, guys, was I cleaned with White Lightning, which is Dixie Bell's cleaner and it's a degreaser and deglosser. Um, it works really well, gets off years and years of dirt and grime. It will also help you to see if you've got any type of bleed for bleed through um, I soaked my pieces in this with a sprayer I just sprayed them with a spray bottle I let it sit I come back and I wipe it off if I've got a lot of like stain looking stuff on my cloth I pretty much know if it looks a little different than dirt and more has more orangey orange and reds in it that is probably bleed through so um, this lets you know that. So you do that, it will also take a little bit of the sheen off of your project. Then you need to rinse really well. So then I, I wipe it all off and I rinse with another spray bottle, fully shower it with water, and then I wipe that off. Cause you don't wanna leave this on your product project because then you might have an adhesion problem with your paint, okay? So um, can you use, yes, you can. You can use a roller with slick stick. You sure can, and yeah, you can use a roller with any of these, any of the, uh, paints and uh, primers and slick stick. Okay, so cleaned it, done. Now let's open up our primer. I have got Boss Gray. Boss comes in three colors. It comes in clear, gray, and white. Um, I believe do, Dixie Bell is with us over on Facebook page. Are we still, do we have any gray primer in stock? We're having a little bit, you know, with the rest of the world, we're having a little bit of supply issues on some things. Um, so I'm not sure if we have gray in stock right now, but we do have white as well. I prefer the color primers for blocking. Um, so one thing you do want to do when you've got your boss is you want to use a stir stick of some sort because as it's been stored on shelves and shipped in the, you know, shipped in the trucks and then it gets to your house and it's stored on shelves, you'll see that it does get some of the bonding and additives will separate and settle down in the bottom of the piece. So that will stir out. You just stir it up. You know, it's not, not really any different than if you buy all natural peanut butter or almond butter and the liquid kind of comes to the top and you just got to stir it in. I usually just keep scraping it and kind of smashing it against the side. Uh, some people are legit and they use like a beater. They put like an electric blender in there and, and beat it up. You don't, you don't have to do that. Um, maybe if you've got a lot of jars, it, it actually smooths out within just probably five minutes of spending some time stirring. So this has already smoothed out quite a bit here. So it's really broken up. And I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with the project anyway, because we don't wanna spend the time doing that. But make sure that you do that, you guys, because you want to make sure that you've got all of your bonding um, uh, properties and your, um, your levelers, your self-leveling properties, all of that can be down in the bottom there. Okay, so we've got that. So now what I do is I start with my brush and I know, I know Facebook y'all are looking at like not me with no head. Um, why are you using boss instead of slick stick for the silk? Because you can, 
So this piece right here, um, I already cleaned off really, really well. And I want to, because it, oh, I didn't tell you that. I should tell you that. Let me put the camera up. Um, it did bleed. So this piece bleed, bled, especially the top for some reason. I don't know why. I think the top had some water damage from people sitting like drinks on it. And the water damage had kind of opened up the pores of the wood. It was very dry and open on the top. When I sanded it back a little bit, it just, I think, released a lot of the wood tannins. So when I was wiping back, I had a lot of wood tannins. So I want to make sure that I am getting a really good block. And so I am going with this. Um, with silk, which we'll talk about in just a minute, you sometimes will, if you've got a super glossy surface, you want to do like a scuff sand, um, which is just using a, a sanding sponge and just giving us a scuff sand on that glossy, shiny surface. This piece does not have a shiny surface. If it looks like it does on this drawer, it's just the reflection of the light, but I actually can see wood grain in it. I can feel, I can feel the wood grain. My fingernail goes down into it. So there's, there's a lot of tooth and grit on this piece already, okay? All right, so I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna go down with the camera like this. So we've got an inset here. I've got my boss, slick stick, whatever it is that you're gonna use for whatever reason. I've got a dry brush here and I do my little inset first like this. I get all up in here because a roller is not gonna get in there for you. You're not gonna be, even with that tiny roller today, I tried to get up in here just to see if I'd be able to and that didn't work. So I go ahead and use my brush and then what I do is I go ahead and I put this all over my piece. Now, boss will start to set up pretty quick, so you don't, you know, you don't want to work on too large of a space at a time. You don't want to boss your entire piece and then try to go back and roll because clearly your piece will have dried. Boss dries really fast. Um, and I will only put one coat of boss on this piece because the uh, paint already has a, the equivalent of one coat of boss in it. So that means that we have two coats of primer going on. We've got this coat right here and then the coat that's inside it. And like I said, this, this piece does not require slick stick for silk. That's only if you're using silk on something that is really, really slick and shiny. And let me get the top of this here as well. And actually I can just roll that out. We'll just roll that. We're not worried about that. Okay, so if I left it like this, it would self-level, it's totally okay, guys. I have brush painted furniture for 14 years now and not very often do I use a roller, but when I'm gonna do a white coat, now let me hold this up to the camera so that you can see. You can see there, see the brush marks? See that? Now it'll level itself out a little bit, it will, but you can see them there. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my little roller here and I'm just gonna roll right over what I've painted. So I'm just flattening out my brush strokes, just like that. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on the top here. Just gonna flatten them out. Now y'all know how I do pounce a lot. Let me pull this down and we'll just roll right over the top here. Y'all know how I do a pounce technique a lot? That's sort of the equivalent of rolling or spraying that's what a roller does, y'all know that, right? A roller gives like a sprayed on look. Um, but you can get the same thing with a brush by pouncing. But I just want to give y'all options. I want you to see, uh, just like last week, someone asked me, kept asking why we were using uh, this, this technique right here, guys. This is pouncing. Okay, so let me pounce this whole top area here. I don't have any additive in, in my paint, so it's not gonna be super thick. Now, I want y'all to look at the difference. Look at the top of the drawer versus that outer lip. It looks the same. So the roller and the pouncing gives you the same look. And if you sprayed, it would give you the same look as well. So I just want you to have options. Uh, last week, someone kept asking, why are you using silk on the canvas? Remember we did the painted canvas last week. But why silk, why silk? And I didn't see those comments and Matt didn't tell me that because you know Matt was commenting. By the way guys, Matt is um, working with Zadie, she's sick and she's got a ton of homework 
and so he's working with her tonight so he's not with us tonight <clears throat> anyway she's missed three days of school We're, we've all kind of got a little bug I didn't see the comments until later and I thought well there was no real reason other than just to give you an option just to let you know maybe you've already bought a lot of silk hi Kristen you didn't know that really are you serious see even an even a uh, experienced painter learns something new. Kristen is a, one of our fabulous retailers and also runs the World of Chalk Paint Group and even she learned something. Oh, I'm honored. Anyway, it's just to give you options. What if you've bought silk and you've bought a lot of it in all the colors and you had an opportunity to paint, um, thank you Kristen, you had an opportunity to paint some fabric and you're like, oh shoot, I've never seen anyone paint fabric or canvas or drop cloth in silk. They always use chalk. I guess I gotta order some chalk paint, mineral paint. No, you can use your silk. So that's why I did it. That's why, um, oh, Amber, I know, hun, no, it's not COVID. We did test, we just got like, I don't know, some kind of like allergy bug or something. Well, not really, it's not an allergy, but we do have a virus of some sort. Um, okay, so I did this whole thing, and we're gonna paint it with silk, but now let's do the same thing. Let's prime this. Small brush, small roller, don't have anything fancy here, guys. I'm using an itty bitty baby tray, real professional, and a small brush, even though on a larger surface, normally you would wanna have a bigger brush. This is my flat medium, it's my favorite brush. So, same thing, just gonna dip my brush, and I'm gonna just brush this on, just like this. Now, you can do the same sort of thing that I'm doing here with the blue sponge that Dixie Bell has, the blue sponge applicator, and um, that works as well. It's a round sponge. Um, you can use, like I said, this type of these right here. You can just drag that. These kind of take off some of the uh, product, though. A roller does, too. A roller actually lifts some of your products. So if you've got a lot of product, it's heavy on here, like right now I'm putting this on really heavy, the roller is actually gonna remove some of that product. So anytime you paint with a roller, you usually have to use, you know, if you're doing walls in a roller versus brush in a roller, walls in a roller, you're usually gonna have to do two coats because a roller does lift the, the product. And you'll see down there all the way. I'm just doing the leg, excuse me while I Excuse me while I get down here and do this leg. Let me move it down a little bit. There we go. Um, so I'm even gonna take the time to do this leg. No, I probably shouldn't. I should probably do the body. Okay, so let me show you. I got this tiny little itty bitty, itty bitty roller. Itty bitty, but it will still work. And I have a bigger one. I have one that matches this tray like a flocked one, I have a felt one, and this here is just a felt roller. So I'm gonna run it along my side here, and then I'm just gonna run this up and down, get it going, there we go. And nothing special, I'm just flattening it. See my brush marks? Can you see them? Watch. I'm just gonna take those out. Now this is only important, guys, if you're doing a really simple finish. For me, when I'm adding sea spray and transfers and stencils and all the colors in the rainbow and, and uh, you don't need to do this. This isn't even necessary. But if you're wanting a clean, clean, clean finish, this is extremely helpful. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, so let me finish out this leg and then we're gonna turn this around and we're gonna start laying on some actual silk paint. Now, if you're using chalk mineral paint also, because chalk, you know, we're gonna use silk today. So if you're using chalk mineral paint, another way to get a really brushless, flawless finish with the chalk mineral paint is water. So we use, Cecilia, hi there, honey. Good to see you. Uh, we use a, the Mr. Bottles, the spray bottles. And we do that to not only help blend colors, but we do it to smooth out our brush strokes and make our paint have a very, very flawless look, right? But because silk is what we're using tonight, because I don't want to top coat this piece, I want to save myself a step and not have to come back and put a top coat on it. Um, 
then, see I'm even running this little baby roller up and down this leg. It's working perfectly. I kind of like this little baby roller. I think I think I'll keep it. I think I'll keep you. All right, um, what was I telling you? I forgot. I can't, I can't keep a train of thought. Maybe I need a sip of coffee. Uh, what's your best type of roller pad to use, please? I don't really use rollers that often, but I this one is a foam. It's a tiny little foam roller. I usually prefer one that is a little bit flogged, just a little bit flocked, but this one is foam. All right, so that is done. Now let's spin it all the way around to our other side and let's break open some silk. How's that sound? Let's break open some silk. All right, so I don't even have other brushes right here. Let me take a sip of my, yes, I'm drinking coffee at 7.30 Central Time. Mm. Yum, yum. All right. So I'm not even going to wipe, I'm not even going to wash the, the gray boss out of here. I'm just going to squeeze this out onto this because I don't have a replacement roller because I don't use these that often. Uh, is that boss as a first coat? Yes, Philippe, it is. It sure is. What are those little rollers that the furniture sits on? Those are called Sandra. Those are called, she's on Instagram asking that, um, furniture dollies or tri dollies. Um, you can get those at the Harbor store or Harbor Freight. Um, I have mine in my Amazon shop. If you um, really didn't need these, this piece is so light. I also don't have the back of that leg painted all the way, but that's okay. Thank you though. Um, anyway, those little tri dollies, they're, they're affordable, they're super affordable. I have right now in my shop, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7, 18, 19, 20. I have 20 of them in use right now in the shop. Um, okay, so this is good. We're gonna move forward with that. And here is our brush that's got, and I'm actually gonna use this too. <laughs> Not that I don't have like a gazillion up behind me, right? No, I'll get a new brush. I'll get a new brush. I just can't get a new roller. Please, Wool, let's see. We're gonna get a brand new one. We're gonna get a brand new brush, like in the package. Ugh. In the package. Brand new, brand new, just for you. Look how pretty, flat medium. What's y'all's favorite brush? What is your favorite brush? What's your favorite synthetic brush? This is our synthetic brush. Miss Cynthia, hi honey. Um, this is mine, this is my favorite synthetic brush. My favorite natural bristle brush now is the best dang wax brush. My gosh, I love that brush. I'm calling it the magic brush. Do you remember Jennifer Allwood's business was the magic brush? That's what I'm calling it. You like the mini, I like the mini too. Oh, you're jelly, you're jelly. The mini angled, look at y'all. Who answered my question yesterday on my post on Facebook? I gave y'all a little quiz. I need to go back and see how everybody did. The first like five people that answered didn't get it right. Some of y'all got, so I posted a picture and I had four brushes laid out that I was working with. And I said, who can name all these brushes? And some people got all but one, kept missing one, missing one. At that point, not everyone had gotten it. Um, all right, so this is silk. All-in-one mineral paint, built-in primer, built-in top coat. This is Endless Shore. It's a nice off-white. See right here next to the gray, which looks actually very white. Okay. <laughs> like doing tricks. Um, you didn't see that post? Yes. I don't know if I got it all right, but you did answer. I'm sure you did, Amber, you're so loyal. Okay, here we go, let's throw down. Oh, you know what, we should stir our endless shore. So I shook it a little bit, but let's use the same stick, wipe it off. Let's use the other side of it. And same thing with silk, it's very important. Oh, this has nothing in the bottom, nothing. But it does, you know, it contains a lot of those same properties. It's got the equivalent of um, a top coat of Gator Hide. And it has the equivalent of 
a coat of boss already in here and then the paint with its self levelers and its pigments and also you really do need to start but there was nothing in there it was perfect all right so here we go this is our silk Ooh, that is so pretty isn't that so pretty sue your favorite's the mini it used to be the mini for me too but i really i don't know the flat medium is just become my all i use it for everything okay with silk if we're gonna tap back into silk like we're gonna go back in it with the roller you do need to move a little bit faster because silk does start to form a skin on the top of it pretty quick you don't have as much play time and it really does depend where you live as well like your humidity you know if you're working in a climate controlled space um so you do have to kind of keep it moving, keep it wet, keep working it. Because if you start, if you let it sit, it's going to start to kind of set up. So we're going to get after this with a roller. We're going to just do the side right here. This is such a gorgeous color. Don't y'all think this is going to be beautiful with gold? Y'all are going to see it finished on my page, and you're going to think you're on the wrong page. You're going to be, what is that finish on Tracy's page? There's no way Tracy painted that. Yes. There is. All right, my little roller here. I'm just gonna go up and down. Well, we won't go up and down. I went up and down with the primer because I didn't care, but I'm gonna raise off. I'm going to the top and rolling down, top, rolling down. Taking my brush strokes right out. Can y'all see a difference between the side that is brushed and the side that's rolled here? So we will do a second coat, or this will require a second coat, but right now all I'm doing it's just flattening out my brush strokes. That's it. And you don't have to. You do not have to do this, guys. This is just another option. Like I said, for those of you that get wrapped around the axle, all worked up over brush strokes, you know, paint can be magic, but I mean, it's not that magic. You may have to take a little extra step and then you can get that really flawless right on finish. It does self-level beautifully. It really does. If you've not used it before, it really does. But isn't this color gorgeous? I love this color. I don't even know when is the last time I did a solid color. I don't think this piece will stay solid, to be honest. I think I'll end up putting something else on it. But I am at least going to photo stage it and photograph it in this solid state. Just to prove that I can. Um, oh, I did that. Okay. Nice, right? So pretty. I am going to try this with my silk finish. Thanks. You're so welcome, Julianne. You are so welcome. Okay, so let's turn it. Um, no, let's do a drawer. Let's do a drawer. I was going to turn it around. Okay, this doesn't work with like all the levels of wood and look at here. The rollers work great if I were just on the flat shop floor, but I... I had a tarp, painter's tarp down, and then I had wood down, and that didn't work. Now I just put my paint and my my fingers and my paint finish. <laughs> Let's do a drawer. This right here would be really easy. You know, we would just roll and paint and roll. But like I said, I use my brush and I use the roller. The reason is, if you pour paint into this little tray right here, and you roll it out, and then you put it on, it's going to go on super thin really really thin so it really does help to brush it on first get the thickness that you want and then just roll out your brush strokes that is the difference really that i'm showing you tonight um is this the one we just did or is that one i can't tell oh no that one's wet okay <clears throat> here we go same thing here camera down there we go same thing Got my Endless Shore and Silk. I'm gonna turn this up so you can see. I'm gonna paint that inset first, getting that trim. God, this color is just beautiful. Reminds me of lace, like a color of lace. Okay, now I'm gonna paint on ahead and I don't really need that little tray. I've got it, you know, if I want it, but I don't need it. I'm really brush painting and then just smoothing out my strokes. Now I could try, I could run this other little thing. And I mean, it kind of does the same thing, but 
like that roller. All right. My camera angle's not the best. Y'all bear with me. Bear with me since my cameraman's busy tonight. Wrap this up. And I don't need to do the other side because I'm gonna use my roller. So here we go, got my roller. And like I said, I'm gonna lift and come back. I mean, I could go up and back and forth if you want at first, and then as long as you come down and just go the same direction. And like I said, it'll require two coats, but what a huge difference in your finish. Really does make a big difference. Just flatten out your brush strokes. I'm gonna turn it around to this side here because I've got a bunch of paint on my roller already and I'm just rolling that out. Now it doesn't want to get in that little crack there very well. I really should have brushed that in. I'll do that on the next coat. But there we go. And I'll hold this up for you so you can see what an absolutely perfect, perfect finish this is. Look at that. You can see the light. Instagram's got a really good view there. See the, the sheen on it? Okay, let me see if I can get that for, let me see. There we go, you see that catching it up there? See that sheen, see that rolled sheen? That is perfect. Yes, you sure can, you sure can. You just don't usually, you know, the chalk mineral paint's usually much more of an artistic paint and it's just a paint that people are wanting to get in there and move around a lot, blending two colors, three colors, four colors, and you know, doing drips and you know, so it's just a much more artistic paint. It's not one that people are, well, some people are doing like a super clean farmhouse finish, that sort of thing. So yeah, rollers work great. Brush it on, get it on there in the amount that you want, and then just kind of roll your, your uh, paint trucks out of there if they're bothering you. So um, that's it, you guys. We are done. I hope you uh, learned a lot tonight, and I hope that you will give Silk Paint a try. It is a beautiful, beautiful product. The glorious thing about it, let me close with this. The glorious thing about silk is that I'm gonna do my second coat on here. When this is dry, I'm gonna do my second coat and then I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to put a top coat on it. I don't have to wax it. I don't have to decide. You can if you want to. Um, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Patty on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, Deanna. Good to see you, hun. Um, you're welcome, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you, Dixie Bell. So that's that. That's all she wrote, you guys. Uh, I hope that it inspired you and that you will try silk. And oh, that's what I'm saying. Glorious. One and done, right? Or two. Two and done. Two coats and done. I'm done. Um, I'm going to head on over to my own page and finish this up. I want to get it covered. All of it covered. And then uh, at eight o'clock right here on the Dixie Bell main page, uh, Emily of Emily Roth Designs, will our Weathered Hearts Designs will be live for another tutorial for you. So uh, do you paint the inside of the cabinet? It turned out beautifully. No, if my, if my piece, the drawers are spotless on this piece. Like if my drawers look like this, there's no, oh well, that one might have something in it. Well, the other one's perfect. No, I won't, I'll clean it out. And I won't, unless a client asked me to, but this one didn't. She didn't ask. Um, yay, so good to see all of you. I'll see y'all next Wednesday. I don't know what we're going to be doing next Wednesday, honestly. I don't. I hope y'all saw I did a couple of reels on Instagram and post on Facebook of the new stencil designs that released um, today that you can order the tea towel I shared a project um, and the tea towel floral and the lotus bloom. I shared inspiration projects of both of those today and you can use my link to order those as well be sure to go check out my page on instagram and facebook and you can see those projects in action with both of those abby you ordered all three that's wonderful that is wonderful they're really good they're a great size they are a great size it's a genius idea so okay guys i love you all and we will see y'all maybe over on my page and um Michelle, I do, I have, they're right there. So when I go over to my page, I will pop them out. And well, actually we have a second. Let me show you real quick. They're right here. Here's one of them. Let's see. Here is a 
Lotus Bloom. So this is the tea towel stencil. Looks like this. Looks like the embroidery that you see on an old fashioned like vintage tea towel. And then Lotus Bloom looks like this, but I've got it taped off because I did something different. You can see that on my page. I, I did the florals on one drawer and then I wanted only the swag on the next drawer. So I taped this off and I did the swag. So um, if you like these, go check that out. And I've got my link listed there as well. And y'all can order these and they'll come right to your door. I love the, si the size of them because no more cutting up your stencils. Um, because they're big and bulky. This is a really good size for drawer fronts and drawer sides. Really good. Sherry, I'm so glad. Thank you for joining tonight, hon. Okay, guys, I really am going to go this time. We'll see y'all soon, okay? Y'all take care. Bye-bye.